as I mentioned before, uh, whenever I'm doing any kind of geometry that's molded, I know that I'm going to have to have a, um, a hefty amount of fillets and rounds, but I choose not to put these in the sketch environment. I feel like I've got a lot more control by waiting until later to apply those as fillets on the solid, whether I'm using face fillets in a, in a surface type scenario or whether I'm doing uh, solid fillets. And so you'll see all of my sketches here have uh, kind of hard corners. I did put arcs in there that are representing you know, the, the basic outline and shape of our uh, main body. And so with that, uh, that sketch highlighted, we can go ahead and start the process of extruding this. Uh, we're going to come out 8 millimeters. I'm using metric on this particular data set. It was a lot easier to, uh, um, to get a handle on, on our geometry. And so I'm using metric as opposed to imperial. And I do want to use the draft function here. I'm going to specify three degrees of draft, which is pretty healthy for an injection molded part, um, you know, plastic, but, um, you know, sufficient enough. I don't want to go too light. It just causes um, premature mold wear, and it gives me a, a nice look and feel to this one. So three degrees is going to be my standard taper. Uh, something I didn't, I didn't mention as much. Before, whenever you whenever you design to a, a a taper or a draft angle, it's nice from a mold perspective to keep that as consistent as possible. And the reason why is we can we can cut taper to tools that the mold maker can use as they're machining out the part. So that way they're not having to contour all the faces. They can go through a traditional two and a half D or three um, three D milling, and uh, three axis milling, and so. Um, that's why I, I choose to, to keep a consistent angle. We'll go ahead and hit the green check mark and we get our first uh, recognizable feature on our, uh, on our part. And I'm going to come towards the, the screen first and then I'll, I'll go away from the screen. One of the things that you've seen me do in these, um, in these videos is I'll rename features. I'll rename the sketches or the features themselves and you may not be aware of how I do that. And so by slow double clicking so I clicked once paused for a moment clicked again now I can come in here and start to give um, these features you know near side I can start to give these features some names that are a little more uh, explanatory of what they are and how they're going to help us out in our feature tree certainly not required to name all your sketches or your features but it does make it helpful especially if you're working with a larger group of people and somebody might uh, work on this project collaborate with you and you want them to be able to uh, to know what's going on as well and so it's just a little little tidbit there just in case you didn't know uh, as I mentioned a while ago I've got all my sketches on the front plane and I'm gonna go ahead and turn a couple of these off just to make a little bit of clarity. It's easy. It's the only thing I had in here. I didn't have any other geometry, but I wanted multiple layout sketches. And so using that front plane, I can derive all, all, those, um, all those sketches on, on that one plane without having to create additional planes. But what I want to do is I want to take this optic mount sketch that I've got, and I've defined where it's at the furthest away from the front plane as far as its size, placement, and then I want to, I'm going to draft that back towards the front plane. And so instead of having to make extra uh, planes, as I mentioned, I can use the extrude boss command to get there. So I'll select the sketch, choose extrude boss. But the very top box up here sometimes gets overlooked because by default, it's going from the sketch plane, which in this case is the front plane. But we've got a couple other options underneath there. I could choose an additional surface, face, or plane. I could choose a vertex, or the, the last option, which is the one I want to choose here, is I want to offset that. I'm going to choose a distance of 45 millimeters, and you can see as I move around, it has now moved the starting, or the from, 45 millimeters away from the front plane. Now I can choose to switch the direction of the offset, but I wanted the default, the one that came towards me. But I do want to change the direction of the extrusion itself. So I'll click on my toggle right here in order to change it to extruding back towards my first feature. And this is where I may want to choose that I want it to go up to a surface. In this case, we want the front plane. 
planes act as surfaces in this regard as well. And you kind of look at this and you say, well, why didn't you just extrude it 45 degrees out from the front plane? Well, the reason why is I want to add the draft angle as part of this process. And I wanted to define it, what it was like, what the dimensions were like out here at this edge, but I didn't want to have to create an additional surface. This is just another technique that you can use. I'm not saying it's the only way in order to create this geometry. I'm going to use the draft outward option because of the way that I'm constructing this. And you'll see that it's going to go up to the front plane and it's going to go at our draft angle outward of three degrees. When I click on the green check mark, we'll let those bodies merge into one another and you'll see we'll start to get our shape and our outline for the main body of our viewer.